Hi, this is John Young with the Disc Jockey News and Disc Jockey News TV. Thank you for joining us tonight out on Facebook and out there on YouTube. For tonight's show, we've got a special guest. I really want to like you, but I'm going to probably hate you. Hey, this is John Young with the Disc Jockey News and Disc Jockey News TV with today's Tuesday tip. And today's tip is 10 different things, things to be aware of that are basically going to be the things that makes other DJs hate you or where some DJs in your market hate other DJs in the market. These are 10 of the things that are commonly brought up. And I want to talk about those 10 in today. So it's a little longer Tuesday tip, but just bear with me. First off, DJs hate DJs that pretend to be something that they're not. DJs who are pretending that they know things that they don't, that they're experienced in doing different things and know how to perform this or know about this music or this this knowledge. Pretending that they are everything when they're really not. Something that you're not. It's a huge issue uh, in the DJ community. Another thing that DJs hate is from those same DJs who are over-promising and under-delivering and giving us all a bad name. They're the ones that come in there and they've never done a whatever event it is. This event, they've never done one of those. And all of a sudden they're promising not only can they do the event, they can do it at a super high level and they've got skills and abilities and different things. They're over-promising and then when they get there, they're like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, that just didn't happen. Or, or maybe uh, they promised a huge sound system and they don't have it. So then they make, oh, well, it broke last night. Overpromising, underdeliver, a huge issue, and it makes DJs hate DJs. Another thing DJs hate, and probably this should be number one, is undercutting. DJs who basically will say, oh, how much did they charge you for that? I'll do it for $50 less. Undercutting is not a cool thing ever, no matter what you're doing. Yes, it's the way the world works, you're going to say, because Walmart does it. They reduce their prices all the time. Walmart also has a game plan and an idea of how they can make money as a business. If you don't have that, you're just undercutting to throw money away and to hurt yourself and hurt the industry. Don't be an undercutter. And number four, kind of related to the undercutting, is for DJs who basically are out there and working for less than minimum wage. What I mean by that is if you take your sound system and just go figure what it would cost, half of what it would cost to rent your sound system. Maybe you're running speak tops and subs. Go and figure out what it costs to rent just two speakers and then pay yourself minimum wage for the time of loading, for travel, and there, and back, and unloading, and that figured out that many times you're out there doing shows for less than what those two numbers together are. A lot of DJs are doing that. They're out there doing those $150 to $200 events, and they're not even paying themselves minimum wage. And other DJs absolutely hate that because all you're doing is belittling those people out there who have skills and abilities and are trying to charge a, a responsible rate. Not professional rate. I'm saying a responsible rate for what they do. Number five, another thing that DJs hate are the know-it-all DJs. And a lot of you are going to say, John, you're exactly one of those DJs. Well, yeah, I've been around for 30-some years. I have gone, I've invested money to go listen to presenters and go to conventions, and I talk to DJs. A lot of know-it-all DJs, the ones I'm referring to that people hate, are the ones that basically have never gone anywhere, never done anything, never done anything to improve themselves. They graduated from high school, maybe with the, their diploma, and the next thing they did is they started their DJ business and have never done a thing, and yet they're an expert in everything DJ. Not that you could be good and you couldn't be knowledgeable with self-study but if you're not doing the self-study and you're not going to go learn and you're not asking questions and things you are just a problem and you're you're a know-it-all problem that's really ruining a lot of the parts of the industry next one six that djs hate is djs who are out there stealing music yes uh, you know we all go and we download here for, here and there and doing different things but overall you've got a lot of djs who are out there using illegal music services that are selling illegal tracks they are downloading things from youtube they are going and actually using things like spotify which is illegal to use to dj with by the way or apple music streaming which is illegal to use for djing by the way they're using these different services that are not designed or not being reimbursed the artists aren't being reimbursed in such properly using illegal music and copying Ill illegal music back and forth that just absolutely drives djs crazy because some people out there in the industry are paying for their music and are being responsible that's the biggest thing it's the ethics and responsibility yes you'll be able to get away with it and yes you'll probably never be busted for it but to do it ethically and to be responsible as a professional business person that's what just drives those of us who do it absolutely crazy Number seven is cheating of the clients because you're not insured. You're putting your clients at risk. Now, this is for mobile DJs. If you're a club DJ, different story. Don't, don't even, we don't even go there. But for a mobile DJ, if I'm out in the field and I have got gear set up and it's my gear and something falls on a guest at an event, my liability insurance is there to protect them and to protect the event and protect me also from being sued. 
if you don't have that and that speaker falls down and hits someone and they have to go get stitches and different things they may be no way for that to get paid because the insurance may say oh well it's their fault they put the speaker up there and the stand was was suspect well I haven't protected my clients and I haven't protected the guests because I'm not insured. And t being irresponsible like that is one of those things that just absolutely drives professional DJs crazy. Number eight is DJs who basically lie to themselves, lie to other DJs, and lie to their clients. And I say start off with themselves is because sometimes they're telling you these stories about how great or how much they charge or how incredible they are or how much skills they have or how big these events are that they perform. And after a while, they start to believe their own hype, which is, is really kind of weird because when you start to find out more information about them and they're believing their own hype is just like mind blowing. Secondly, they're, you, they're talking to other DJs in the market and they're like, oh, every every time I go out, there's 10,000 people and there's people throwing money at me all the time. And oh my gosh, I can't, I'm can't i so busy. And, and then we find out later that they're not. The lying to other DJs in the market to make themselves look good. And then, of course, then going back to, the, it was actually an earlier one, where they're lying to their clients. They're promising things that they can't deliver. They're saying, based on experiences that they didn't have, they've been here and I've done this, or they've, they've kind of stretched the truth a lot. The lying DJs who lie to themselves, they lie to other DJs and lie to clients. It's just an absolute frustration in the industry. Number nine could have been up the list a little bit, but these are in no particular order. Backstabbing DJs. DJs in the market there that basically are going to go badmouth every other DJ in the market trying to make themselves look good. You know where they are. They're out there. They do this on a regular basis. Generally, they're probably ones who are going to be undercutting, maybe whatever. But backstabbing DJs who are out there saying negative things about other DJs. It's one of those things, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. Don't be a backstabbing DJ. Yes, they may be suspect that it's, you know, there's some other DJs in your market that are, are you know falling into this list we've been covering so far, but don't be the person out there who's like, oh, they're a jerk and they do this and they do that. And they're probably, no, you can ask questions about the, have you, now, have you thought about this? And, and are you looking for DJs who are insured? Boy, that's, that's an important thing to, to check for insurance because if something happens, so you can ask questions so that the bride is more informed in making her decisions and making in, in making her uh, selection of entertainment. But you don't want to be saying, oh, you don't want to go with X, Y, Z because they're the ones who don't have insurance and they're the ones that have shoddy equipment and it's going to fall on your guests and somebody's going to die and you're going to be you know having that cost. Whatever. Don't do that. Don't be the backstabbing DJ. And number 10 in this are DJs, and this is probably one of my biggest pet peeves, DJs out there who are all about taking and never about giving. They're the ones that come through here and they watch our videos on DJ and TV, or they're going out and watching you know, Brian Red's channel or, or Jonathan Lewis or any any number of people who are creating content out there, and they're take, 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 take. And then as soon as they, someone asks them a question, they're like, oh, I don't share any information. Most of you are not that way. There's a few out there, but most of you are great, incredible people that share your pet peeves in the comments down below. Most of you are that way. But there's just some out there that are are this way that if it's not free, they're not going to pay for anything because, you know, everything should be free for me because I'm special. Okay, great. Take your specialness and there's the door. You know what I'm saying? We don't have time for that. We want to be be working with DJs in our market or working with DJs across the country who are not only going to be you know receiving information and appreciative of it, but they're also going to be helping others. They're helping the next generation of DJs. I can't tell you the number of DJs I've run into the hallway that are out there trying to help the next generation of DJs. And then I run into some that are like, yeah, no, it's all about me, baby. It's all me. What can I get? Gimme, 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 gimme. Oh, you want something from me? Ah, uh, screw you. I'm not going to give. It's all about me. DJs who are basically all about taking and not about giving back. I just absolutely drive other DJs crazy. Well, that's my little list. It's kind of a semi-rant list. Hopefully it made some sense to you. If you've got something that other DJs do in your market that just absolutely drives you crazy, please put that down in the comment section. I'd love to make another list and share that uh, from the different things that just absolutely boggle your mind with what other DJs do in your market and even across the country as you're reading the different chat boards and such. If this is your first time watching one of the Tuesday Tips, thank you for watching. There's a link down in the description below, and that is to all the Tuesday Tips. I do one every Tuesday, and you can go check those out and hopefully you can learn something. This is John Young with the Disc Jockey News and Disc Jockey News TV. Thank you once again for watching.